I wasn't sure how well you'd be able to hear me talk over the engine, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to rev the car up so we'll, we'll see the throttle position sensor. What will happen is it won't move, but then on the RPMs over here, you'll see that go up and you'll see that react to my actual throttle input, but we don't ever see it there. So that's kind of showing that we have a bit of a problem with our throttle position sensor reading. Thanks for tuning in. I have a lot of kind of noise issues coming from my throttle position sensor. I did already change it over to the variable uh, TPS from a later E36, but I'm having some issues. So what's going to happen in today's video is I'm going to kind of explain those issues in a little bit more in depth and then dig into it and try to see what's wrong and what I can fix to, to get that point better. Uh, Cause I think that's going to be my main hold up getting the tune kind of di more dialed in at this point in time. What I was facing on the actual Mega Squirt tuning, I was trying to do everything in, a, in what was called ITB mode, but after talking with some people and reading up on it online, uh, a lot of people were recommending just starting with Alpha N and going through on that. So my original fuel maps, uh, I guess were set to like a map pressure as the, the Y axis, and that was going from you know a, a low amount of pressure up until 200 uh, in case somebody had like boost or something that was just I guess the default settings but obviously for this car being naturally aspirated I never needed to go into that upper range so then when I switched everything over to alpha n it kept kind of an exaggerated range in this case now at alpha n it's looking at percent of the throttle position sensor so what my range was it was going from about 30 which would be 30 percent throttle up to 200 percent throttle which just doesn't make any sense so one of the first early things I did that actually did help the tune was I recalibrated this range, having a lot more resolution in like the zero to 35% throttle position. And then just, you know, my top number being 100, 100% throttle, full throttle, that's all I need. Um, but what I was running into was that my throttle position sensor, I could rev the car up and I could, you know, increase RPMs, increase speed, all that but I wasn't really getting a good reading of the throttle position sensor. After giving the car like 15, 20% throttle, it would pick it up as being red, um, but I was losing everything in that lower range, which is where the, the drivability comes from when you're cruising and just giving little throttle inputs here and there. One other thing I'm gonna look into while I'm in there, uh, because the throttle position sensor is a pretty tricky place to get to, uh, it's going to require to pull off most of the components of the ITBs. The wiring for the E30 engine harness uh, for Megasquirt, I have to, or actually, I guess it's for the later uh, variable throttle position sensors. You have to flip a couple of the pins. I did this years ago when I first installed Megasquirt on my car, and I just don't think I ever did that right. So while I'm in there, I'm going to be testing out the pins and the wires there, and then if I need to, re try to redo some of that wiring. Just as a reminder of where the throttle position sensor is, it's tucked in between the last pair of throttle bodies and the firewall down in there. Not really any easy way to get it out with everything installed. So what I'm going to have to do, take the plenum with the backing plate off and then come in here and probably get out the spacers and the back throttle bodies so that I can get the sensor out start figuring out what's going on with it. So it feels like the 12th time or so of me taking everything off uh, in different stages of the, the plenum, the backing plate, the spacers, the throttle bodies. I think I'm getting pretty good at it and it should go fairly quickly. So just a quick little recap so far, I was able to get all of the components out of the car, uh, played around with the throttle position sensor, and I think at this point, I'm just gonna have to get a new unit. So we're on hold for a couple days while that's shipped in. Hopefully that'll smooth out those lower ranges. And um, after looking at the wiring, it definitely does not seem right. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time of just trying to extend that wire. I don't wanna have too many connections in there just in case an extra connection adds a little bit of noise. But at this point, I don't really feel confident running an entirely new line, an entirely new wire back to the ECU. So I'm going to do what I can, 
about just adding in a little bit of a, a connection space and then getting those pins correct in the actual sensor and harness. So hopefully that'll help calibrate the TPS a little bit better. And then with this new unit that's coming in just a couple days, I'll be able to get everything resynced. We'll always have to go through that process when we take these components off. But at this point, it's pretty quick to get through. And I'll hopefully uh, get to actually showing you guys how I go about tuning. So after some shipping delays, I finally got in a new throttle position sensor. Definitely a longer wait than I wanted to get working on this project, but now that we have it on in hand, we'll be able to go ahead and get this installed in the cart. Also for the wiring, I have these connectors. They're probably not the best thing to use for this scenario, but it's what I have and I like them because I'll be able to kind of rearrange the wiring in case I don't get it correct the first time. But after reading all the wires properly, um, I should be able to hook it up in the, in the correct format. So I'll just have to clip off the old connections and go ahead and get these wired in. Ooh, big fail. Ah, all right, I switched to another type of quick connects and the first one got on there a lot better than the other variety I was using. Guys, I used my heat gun and I shrink wrapped these. Look at me learning new tricks. So for this, the final thing was to basically flip-flop the first and second pins. So the black, um, stays black to black in there, but then the middle one, this side is like a, a brown and an orangish, but now it's connected to the blue, and then the original brown orange is connected to the blue up here. Um, I guess a better person would have just repinned the sensor, but uh, this is what we're working with for now. So now that I'm a car wiring specialist, uh, I'm ready to put in my application to any Formula One teams that might need help. Now, just to snake that back through so it's ready to plug into our throttle position sensor. Okay, so I have the car turned on enough for Tuner Studio to pick it up. And what I'll do is come up here into the tools, calibrate TPS, and get this set up. I've already done it once, so the numbers do look better, but we'll just do it again. Uh, foot's off the throttle. We'll get the current of the closed, and then I'll go full throttle, get the current of that. We'll accept in, and you can see it's reset our throttle position sensor. Um, and then if I just lightly start pressing the throttle, look at that. We have some range in the lower percentages, where before it would just jump to 10. We have a nice, smooth... Transition all the way up, all the way up. It's a lot of pedal travel. And a little bit shy of 100%. And let off, falls down nicely back to about zero. So, the new throttle position sensor is looking good. Look at all that little low range. So now that I've showed on the Tuner Studio that the throttle position sensor is looking good. I have to go ahead and get the spacers on. Um, might have the trumpets already attached to them, but I have to sync these because everything's come off. So every time it comes apart and goes back together, I have to resync and make sure everything's looking right. I do want to point out that we did change the sensor, but I also made sure to leave the bolts. I didn't crank them down as hard as I could. I was worried that having the bolts super tight on this throttle sensor is kind of making this making it stick. So that could have been my problem all along. So I made sure I cranked it down and then backed them out a little bit so they're still in there snug, but we're seeing that nice good sweep at the lower arc uh, lower throttle position sensor range. No sense in showing it for like the tenth time, but I'm just gonna go ahead, get these slapped on and uh, synced up. Well, I think at this point everything's wrapped up and back together. Uh, we have the new throttle position sensor in and correctly calibrated inside the Tuner Studio software. Uh, the car feels a lot more responsive 
and having the, the tunability in that lower throttle position range, which is where a lot of the cruising driving is happening, uh, I think should help out a lot with the car. Kind of the, the three big takeaways from there is switch to a genuine BMW sensor, always good just to make sure you're using good parts. I know a ton of the, the aftermarket stuff does work fine, so not knocking that, but that extra peace of mind of having a genuine BMW part helps. I've also switched the wires in the connector to make sure that everything's reading properly and the, the Megascore software is getting the right signal from the right pins. And the third thing was that I made sure that the, the TPS was mounted properly and just had enough, it was tight to the adapter, but it's still loose enough that it allows for a nice smooth range of motion, uh, allowing the sensor to work properly. So with these three things, I have a lot more positivity going towards the car and its drivability. Yeah, so as I see it now, that was kind of the last thing that I needed to do. I know I've had a lot of these little things pop up and they've taken me a while to get around to, but as of now, I don't see anything in the near future. So that's, that's always a good sign to have. So thanks for watching.